Inspirational Transformational TV show. Amy Whitney here today with my very special guest, Kathy Marie Buchanan. Kathy is an absolute delight. I was so thrilled when she agreed to come on the show today. Now, I asked Kathy to speak for a few reasons. First of all, I've been very blessed in my life to live in some of the most beautiful places in the world, and for the past year, uh, my husband and I have been absolutely spoiled by Niagara Falls. We live just up from the Horseshoe Falls and I have fallen in love with this place. Now, Kathy grew up here and her debut novel, The Day the Falls Stood Still, is, is set in Niagara Falls. Now, I'm in love with the falls and I am in love with Kathy's novel. It is absolutely divine. It's, it's so well written. It's, it's, it's an absolutely beautiful novel. So on top of those two reasons, my absolute love for Niagara Falls, my love for her novel, Kathy also does some conservation work. She's a founding member of Friends of Niagara um, and she speaks a little bit about that in her interview as well. So it's been an absolute pleasure I'd like to introduce Kathy Marie Buchanan to you today. Enjoy the show. Kathy Marie Buchanan, welcome to Inspirational Transformational TV show. It's such a pleasure to have you today. Thanks, it's great to be here. Wonderful. Now, I just want to start with basically saying how much I absolutely love your book, The Day the Falls Stood Still. Um, and we are going to talk about that in a moment, but before we get into the actual book, I wanted to talk about how much I love Niagara Falls. And mm -hmm. it, I've been here about 14 months and it's under my skin. I think mm -hmm. it is the most beautiful place in the world. Now, you were blessed to grow up here. Right. And I just want, for anybody who hasn't been here or people who have been here, either or, I just want you to tell the audience what it is about Niagara Falls that makes it special to you. Um, well, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, first and foremost, probably, is the natural beauty here. I'd say, uh, you know, despite having lived here for the first 19 years of my life and having seen the falls thousands of times, I still stand at the brink of the falls with a tremendous sense of, sense of wonder and awe. Uh, there's other places like that I love uh, deeply, like the Niagara Glen and the Whirlpool. I was just down there yesterday with some cousins from the, the United Kingdom, and it's such a pleasure to share um, that natural beauty with them. Uh, the other thing that uh, I really, you know, comes to mind about what I love um, in Niagara Falls is really the sense of history here, um, the lore, some of it very quirky. Um, so um, those would be the two things I would say. Gorgeous. Now I've heard you mention before about the Niagara Falls lore. Now I'm a newbie here. So what, what are some of your favorite stories that you grew up hearing? Well, um, you know, the, the, my book is, is based on uh, William Red Hill, or inspired by the life of William Red Hill. So I grew up seeing the rusted out hull of the old scow that's still lodged in the upper rapids, um, uh, you know, on top of the falls. And I grew up knowing about Red Hill rescuing the men that were marooned there in 1918. Um, I grew up knowing about the spectacular ice bridges that would form at the, the base of the falls um, yesteryear. And, uh, heard, you know, from my dad, I guess, about the um, tragedy that happened in 1912 when a bunch of people were out blithely crossing the river and, and the ice bridge suddenly gave way and I, um, you know, I knew about the role Red Hill played in helping uh, rescue some people that day and helping clear the ice. So I think, um, you know, that the Red Hill lore certainly um, I, I, I took with me in my life. Um, you know, and then there's all the stunting. I grew up knowing about Annie Taylor going over the falls in a barrel back in 1901 and, um, you know, Maud Willard shooting the rapids and getting trapped in the whirlpool and, and dying when her dog um, stuck his snout in the air hole of her barrel. So there's that sort of quirky, wacky side to the lore down here as well. So I guess mostly the, the, the stories of the, the daredevils and the, and the stunters and the, and the rescues. And growing up hearing those stories, was that your motivation to become a writer or what was your, your journey into becoming yeah. a writer? I, I don't have a very typical career path to becoming a writer at all. Um, you know, I'm often ask, asked if I always wanted to be a writer and the answer would be a definitive no. 
I spent my, my teenage years disgracing myself in high school English, uh, often getting upwards of 20% deducted for spelling mistakes on exams. Uh, when I headed off to university, I made sure the courses that I was picking didn't require any essay writing, um, any spelling, and um, I graduated with a degree in biochemistry, and then I did my MBA with a heavy concentration in finance, so lots of numbers and very little of the wit written world. Uh, well, well, you know, while I was in high school and then certainly in my early work life, I was always pursuing creative things outside of the courses I was taking or outside of my work. Um, so in high school I was a really quite a serious ballet dancer and uh, I also sewed, does, designed and sewed pretty much all of my own clothes. And then when I first started working, so my first work um, was, uh, I was working at IBM at first in finance and then in technical sales. And at night school I was always taking a, a, a course and I think, you know, I was searching for that outlet for my creativity. I, I was taking painting and drawing and woodworking and art history and, you know, always something with sort of artistic leanings. And I eventually hit upon a creative writing course and uh, right from that very first course I was, I was smitten and um, really felt like this is something I wanted to pursue. Uh, more seriously. So I, there was about four years when I was um, writing full-time by day, or, sorry, working full-time by day and then cramming in a bit of writing in the evening and, um, in, and, 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 and taking courses. I had three small kids at the time, so it was, it was really hectic. And after about four years of that, um, I decided that I, I would leave the corporate work world, work world and really focus on my writing. Um, I think the Niagara... I mean, I wrote short stories for a while, but once I decided, you know, I always knew that when I wrote my first novel that it was going to be set in Niagara Falls. And, I, you know, I think that's a result of growing up in Niagara Falls. I had no idea what it was going to be about. I didn't know anything about character or plot. I started with setting, which is probably a little bit not typical for a writer. Um, but I think, you know, between growing up with the staggered beauty, the staggering beauty of the falls and then all these crazy bits of lore, you know, it was a real natural place for me to start with setting. So the first thing I did was I read a bunch of books surveying Niagara's history, and I was really looking for, um, you know, a, a story, a, the germ of a story that would really showcase Niagara's, you know, its wondrous side, but also the, the quirkiness of the place. So um, <laughs> that was where I started. And, you know, while I was reading, of course, the story of Red Hill came up and, you know, lots of stories that I was familiar with from my youth, but not necessarily did I have the accurate story. Um, so, uh, you know, I just kept reading and, and I guess it was the Red Hill story really ignited for me, this, these things I knew from, from my youth. Um, and I became more and more certain that my main male character was going to be a, a river man loosely based on, based on uh, William Red Hill. And let's move into um, talking about your book. Would you feel comfortable sort of summarizing what the what the story is about, or you don't like to give away that much? Well, I won't. I'll, I can tell you a little intro. I won't give okay. away the ending or anything. <laughs> but uh, okay. So the day the fall stood still is set in 1915. So it's the dawn of the hydroelectric era in Niagara Falls, and it's also the early days of World War One. Uh, Bess Heath, um, who uh, narrates the story. Uh, is a 17-year-old girl who um, is attending Loretto Academy, which is a, pre uh, a prestigious boarding school which overlooks the, um, the falls. Um, it's a real place. Uh, the night of um, the graduation ceremony at her school, she is taking the trolley home and she runs into Tom Cole, um, this river man that was inspired by William Red Hill. And, um, you know, they're from two very different worlds. She's from a, a, a wealthy, privileged background. He's a, a fellow that really lives off what the river pres provides and has um, an almost mystical ability to predict the often erratic behavior of the Niagara River um, and falls. So uh, there's lots of conflict, you know, based on their backgrounds. Um, also some conflict on, on um, whether the you know, their beliefs about whether the falls should be harnessed and perhaps diminished to produce hydroelectricity. So um, we follow them through um, their early adulthood.